what these things are. They're luggage handle wraps. You see them everywhere. They're very common now. They come in handy because it helps you spot your luggage when you're traveling. This one happened to be free. My husband got it from some business convention or whatever. And uh, they're very simple to make. Notice that this one was tearing up and we're going on a trip this summer. So I thought, you know, I've got lots of fabric scraps. I think I'll do that. Then, lo and behold, I recently have seen uh, the upgrade to these. And that is, you put your name and address and contact information, phone and email, in little things that, you know, you could slide in here. You know, this is what, what they're selling now. And I thought, you know, that's just as easy to make as well. So, why would you want to put your name hidden on the inside? Well, your luggage tags, if they're like this, when you're standing in line at the airline counter, at the ticket counter or whatever, that's fine. But a lot of times, and we have it written very small here, but a lot of times it's flipped over. And people can get your personal information and that's not really safe. And you think to yourself, well, they can't memorize all that while they're standing there. No, but they can whip out their phone and take a picture. So more and more you're seeing the hidden name tags. So I wanted to show you how I did that. Now in this case, I had some fabric scraps. Basically you're just sewing big old square. And then on the back side, of course I covered our personal information as I just got through talking about it, but I literally printed on this fabric and I'll show you how to do that. And that can be your back. So see, it wraps up just like that. Pretty cool, huh? Who knew that painter's tape was see-through in the sun? I had to blur it out to protect our information anyhow, but you couldn't really see that I had printed directly on the fabric piece that I used for the back. So this is what it looks like. For the luggage handle wrap, you'll need two pieces of fabric and one piece of fleece batting, cut six inches by six and a half inches, and some sew-on Velcro strips cut at about five inches. Now I'm using just plain cotton fabric and it's very light and flimsy so just for good measure I added some light interfacing on the back of one of my pieces. This is totally not necessary. It's optional but I want to do it because I want my piece to have more body. Okay so if you're going to do that go ahead and do it and then here's the next step. You're going to put right sides together matching your corners and everything, and then add your batting. We're going to pin all around here, and you're going to sew all around the edges, leaving a two to three inch opening up at the top so that you can turn it right side out. So I've marked mine right there. After you sew all around the edges, you'll want to clip your corners. This reduces bulk. and then turn it inside out. Use an object with a dull point to sharpen those corners. Then you'll want to fold your raw edges inside and press all around sharp, sharp seams. Now we need to top stitch. Get as close to the edge as you can so you'll be sure to encompass all this loose fabric on the inside and top stitch all around the edges. Now on the side that's now measuring five and a half inches, that's where you're going to place your Velcro. Now warning, I have sticky Velcro. Don't use that unless you plan on leaving it on your bag all the time. Uh, if you lose your bag and they have to remove it, this little sticky won't adhere on repeated usages over and over again. So um, that's all I happen to have right now, but I would prefer the sew on and that's what I recommend. So after you put that one on this way, then you flip over the piece and you put the other one right there and sew on each one 
in a rectangular fashion. Okay, so you're finished. You know, you flip it over like that in order to put it on. Now, to get your name on here, theoretically, you could just write it with a Sharpie right onto the fabric and it would work fine. But if you'd rather, you could make a little label to attach right here. Or your back piece could actually have been printed and cut to fit and then attached, which is what I did in that first example. So if you want to print on fabric, continue watching. Now sometimes your fabric choices aren't going to let you print directly on them because clearly the black ink would get lost in uh, the dark background here. Or in the case of this one, you have a busy pattern with dark spots and of course your ink, you know, your letters would get lost in that. So in those cases, you may want to make little fabric labels like this. And that's what I'm about to show you how to make right now. But regardless of whether you make small labels to cut out and affix to your project, or if you want to print directly onto a larger piece and then cut it out to the appropriate size, the process for printing on fabric is the same. You're going to need some freezer paper for this project, and it's located in the grocery store or Walmart over by the plastic wrap or aluminum foil. What we do is adhere this freezer paper to the back of our fabric to make it go through the printer. Next, you want to cut some of that freezer paper and your fabric the size that will fit through a printer. So in the case here, I used 8.5 by 11 just like a regular piece of office paper. Okay, so what we need to do now is adhere the freezer paper to our fabric. Now the way I do this is I turn off my steam, get the wrinkles out of the fabric best you can, and then notice that there are two sides to the freezer paper. You have a shiny side, which is the wax, and then you have the regular paper side. What we want to do is temporarily melt the wax to the fabric. So I'm placing the shiny side down onto the fabric. Okay, so just with some gentle pressure, don't go too crazy with it. And just kind of go over that. And you see now it's adhered. We can see it doesn't come up. And that's good enough. Don't fret if you have a little wrinkle here and there. It's still going to be okay. Now next, you want to print out a sample of the labels you created or whatever because you want to make sure that it's sized correctly, that it prints out the way you intended it to print out before you mess up your fabric. So I just used some recycled paper here, printed it out, like what I see, so I'm ready to get started. Okay, so we, first of all, we want to take out whatever paper you happen to have in your printer, and you need to be familiar with your printer. I know that my printer, you would put things in face down, and then it goes through the machine like this, prints, and comes out like that, okay? So, I put it into the feeder, I press it just gently until I can feel the resistance where it's bumped into the rollers, and then I print. Make sure the proper printer is chosen, and I hit print. I used Microsoft Publisher to design mine. You could use whatever you want to. So now I've got printable labels. Now you'll notice that when I designed this, I printed a very light gray line around each of these things. That's going to make my cutting job much easier because I'm, I sized this in such a way that I have room to zigzag along the outside when I sew the label on. And so I definitely wanted to make sure that I had enough cutting room between there. So that's just a little helpful hint. So well, here I've cut them up and you can see how easy it is just to remove the fabric, let me get it in the light, the fabric from the freezer paper. It just pulls right on off. And it doesn't feel, you know, thick or anything like that. It's great. All right, now you've got two options. You can sew this on to the back piece if you want to, or you can use some Wonder Under or one of those products that lets you iron it directly onto the fabric. And don't forget, you can print directly on your back piece 
of the project. Here I printed on the full size sheet and then cut the fabric piece down to the six by six and a half size that I needed. All right, step one is to adhere our completed tag onto this. Now I'm definitely gonna wanna sew it on, but I really like this stuff. It's called Spray and Bond. And you just give it a little spritz and then place it where you want. Okay, now it'll hold still while I sew it in the machine. Okay, I did a really sloppy zigzag because obviously I'm gonna rip this out to be able to use this again because that is not my name. But you'll want to do something like a um, satin stitch or whatever. You just want to encase those raw ends and that's the most important part. And there you have it. Simply place on the handle of your luggage and you're ready to go off on your adventure.